daybook and then from the daybook it has to move into ledger so it's a three step process Yeah, I am able to hear you, sir. Like this, that if you are given a heaps of notes, 
let's say you are given one crore of rupees and uh, 500 dollar goes and they some and you uh, start counting in one go and then uh, how the traceability is there whether you are completed it correctly or not so what you will do is you will count in packets of like 20 30 or 100 and then you will make like uh, one set uh, uh, one stack of 100 the second stack of 100 third stack of 100 Then there is a tracing, uh, I mean, uh, repeatability or traceability introduced that somebody can go and check whether there are stacks of under each or not, and then we you know how many stacks you have. So that is the whole concept of having different measures. And last but not the least is also making it efficient. Because in the manual system, it's especially in a manual bookkeeping. A lot of manpower will be required, and therefore it is very important to make the system efficient. So although it may look like that you have to move from vouching to casting and casting to posting, or in vouching to daybook and from daybook to ledger, but overall the workload reduces. Because the biggest problem is, you know, is uh, like sorting out information where physically it will go. Like if you have uh, 200 general ledger accounts, then you know looking at the right folio itself is a challenge in a manual accounting system. So many of these things are automatically taken care of by the sorting process which we have in computer, and also uh, because of the relational database. So then we know that once we have a relational database, so the feature of uh, computerization. Takes care of these things, and I think Uta uh, has a slide of comparing the manual bookkeeping versus the computerized bookkeeping, so which you will see subsequently. Now to understand that the concept of uh, bookkeeping and accounting in true sense, it is uh, I would say uh, it will be my suggestion here that we should actually do it in a manual way. Then The whole thing will sync up, sync with us. Okay, so I think one exercise we could come is going to review is uh, maintaining like three months account of this company in a manual. Then and only then you can appreciate that how the mistakes can be traced, how uh, it makes it efficient, how. Uh, the traceability and auditability is possible. How the division of, work. for example, different day books are there. So you have different people in charge of different day books. That is how the division of work is done. The simple question is actually you can technically post everything in journal day book, but then physically the book will be only with one person. Similarly, ledgers also you have. Yes, general ledger, general ledger, then you have an ER account, receivable ledger, then you have accounts payable. In fact, this concept is even followed in a computerized system. In account, in a computerized account system, also these three modules are separate. Uh, I guess with this introduction, I hand over to Tom. Okay, Jay. <coughs> So let's 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 start our class with discussion of the last time assignment. Okay, जी. So let let me open like what Gunjan submitted last time for lecture three, and we will walk through with that. So I will take the lead now. Yeah. Okay. Ji. And you can continue, and then I think you can uh, uh, give this uh, chapter three and chapter four, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, sir. I think rest of the it is quite straightforward. Okay. Okay. Being concept. Hmm. 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 That we should be able to continue for thirteen five. Yeah. Okay. Ji. You know, Sandeep. Sandeep. Uh, in fact, I have to be for today. Okay, sir. Bye bye. 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 Come. 
Yeah, okay, tell me. Uh, is there any, any something uh, frozen on the screen or is my screen? Just, uh, just do the refreshing. Okay. Even after refreshing, you are not able to see my screen? No, I am able to see your screen, but there was something which was uh, on top of this. Actually, this was uh, uh, Princess's screen. Okay, now it's fine. Okay. It's fine, yeah. Okay. <coughs> So, actually, last time assignment was just to prepare general journal from whatever vouchers we had. Okay, Jay. So, we, we had already, like, when we say vouchers, it's like the source document. But most of the time, like, suppose you have a very small business, you will note down the transaction in simple English language. That, okay, this is what we are doing. So, that is like, it's like diary of events. And from diary of events, you are creating general journal. So for every events in the diary, you will have the voucher document, source document. Okay, Jay. So once you have the source document, vouchers, you transfer that data into, there are many types of journals. So like for simplicity in, in the first go, let's assume that you, you have very, very a small business and you do not need the complexity of different day books and all so here like we have what we are doing is like suppose you have very small business in a, say a small village and the number of transaction is maybe say 20 or 100 per day so in that case you will be able to enter the data only in the general journal and no need to no need to have the different day books okay Jay. so here the format is simple like as we discussed last time that you have date then you have the voucher number and it is it should be a serial number and similarly you have accounts and explanation posting reference and posting reference is the account number that comes from the chart of accounts so you will be looking into chart of accounts what is the number and then debit entry is always the first entry and the credit entry will be always the second entry so that's the first thing and was also important that if you look at all the debit entries like cash ppne merchandise inventory so they are starting from they are in the first line and they are on the left hand side okay Jay. and after indentation you are starting the credit entry explanation so this is also like this is what have what is followed in day to day like this is a tradition in accounting that you do like this and then the third line is the explanation a very short explanation of what is this transaction so for every transaction like you you have you will have at least three lines in case of uh, you, you know any complex transaction you will have more than three lines as we will see in some of them okay Jay. so So is there any doubt in this one? Assignment was very straightforward. Like if you really look at that plus and minus convention is very clear to you. What is plus? What is minus? And then you are able to say debit and credit. Then you are. It is just a mechanical process of like once you understand. Like here, like this is important. Like you identify what are the accounts to which it will be posted, and whether it will be a debit entry and and credit entry. Okay, let's walk through with like few of the transaction. Okay, so first transaction was that owners contributed money. So owners contributed money, it means cash will go up and owners equity will also go up. So when we say cash goes up, it is asset, so it will be debited. And owners equity, since this is increasing, this will this will be credited. Okay, yeah. similarly, the second is company borrows money. So once again, when, when it borrows money, asset goes up cash goes up so that is 150 and then here credit will be this is liability debt is liability so increase will be noted with credit so when you buy ppne and use cash so your asset goes one asset goes up that is ppne goes up and cash is another asset which goes down yeah and similarly for merchandise so if you look at the fourth January transaction it is very similar to the previous one only thing is here a different account merchandise inventory is 
going up and cash is going down okay and the next one here like you are buying uh, you are buying inventory on credit so it's like liability is going up that means credit liability goes up is credit and here <coughs> asset is going up so that means it is debit and this is a you know the 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 transaction which is paid by cash and also by a part of that is on credit so this is also very simple that oh, you are one debit entry that is asset is going up and one asset is going down and liability is going up okay ji so next one same like here company sells a stores equipment getting cash and asset going goes down okay so then company returns four merchandise inventory so if you are returning four merchandise inventory and so what will happen like whatever liability you had for that product it will go down so liability goes down so that means it is debit entry and merchandise inventory will be decrease when merchandise inventory decrease it is asset going down that will be a credit entry okay then. so similarly company paid back no, no, moment, uh, yeah quick yeah okay then. Mm -hmm. uh, we had money to pay to this company, so you reduce that by eight hundred. Supposing we had made the full payment earlier. Yeah. Okay. In that case, we did not owe anything now, but the merchandise has been returned. Okay. Would we put it under accounts receivable then, as eight hundred? No, sir. It 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 is look account accounts. Yeah, all payable now. Mm hmm. I I understand now, like what you are saying. sir accounts receivable it is always for the customers okay ji so first of all like we should be very clear that it will not go in accounts receivable because that is only for the customers if you are selling something and customers have not paid you in the full then it is accounts receivable so so actually in real life what will happen as you said that supplier will issue a credit note okay ji and then you will make a entry in accounts payable itself like and why will you do that like yeah it yeah it is like say when you are saying minus 800 it means it is a debit entry yeah so you yeah so you will have a book you will have a book for that particular supplier and in that you will make a debit entry so it will still go when i say okay okay one like today we will talk about that here i am writing, writing accounts payable but actually in real life when we are preparing journal it will not be accounts payable okay ji it will be the name of that this is very simplified case actually it will be the name of the supplier okay and that that is a supplier account so there the debit entry and credit entry and whatever is the balance you get to know okay whether i owe money to that supplier or that supplier owes money to me is it clear to both of you yes okay ji then uh, nine company paid back that to the top look tablet so if you are paying money cash is going down asset is going down so it is credit and accounts payable liability is going down so it will be a debit transaction similarly gunjan is drawing some money so it is 1000 to owner security liability is going down so that is debit and cash is going down that is credit Shankar ji contributed extra to the owner security. It means cash is going up, asset going up, and the owner security going up. So owner security going up is credit. Similarly, company paid back a part of the loan. So if you are paying loan, liability is going down. That is debit, and cash is going down. Down that is credit. Any doubt in this one? Okay, ji. Somebody more than one part. 
Yeah, yeah, it it will not be. It will. It may be that like say you are making a like suppose you are maintaining a simple uh, diary. There you may note that okay, I am doing this. But when accountant look, they know that okay, this is uh, like owners. Uh, this account has nothing to do with the business, so they will totally ignore it. And even serial number or voucher number that is allocated to a, uh, will not be allocated to that. So there will not be any hole in the serial number due to that. so this is also important that you should have a you know like a serial number perfectly fine like it, there should not be like there it used to be the case that even in computerized system like we try to see that there is not a single missing number so whenever you you have a particular account and you have a particular serial like from however you are creating the serial number in computerized system we make sure that nothing is missing and not a single number is missing and if any number is missing then it should be accountable like why we missed that okay ji so company sells merchandise so whenever there is a sale event there are asset going out and asset coming in so first in general like first of, like whatever asset is coming cash is coming and revenue is uh, cash and revenue so 100 so actually you should like write in same order that cash and revenue so cash is going up and revenue is going up so revenue will be credit because it is or part of owner's equity and uh, inventory is going down so inventory this is inventory is going down asset is going down so this is credit and cogs expense this is expense is going up so expense going up will be debit because it is negative of owner's equity okay ji so other than that i think every transaction is quite normal yeah, let me discuss on this transaction company paid its supplier and gets 2% discount so here like uh, we can like for simplicity we can one, as we divided our transaction into two part here also like we can divide the transaction into two part so for in first go since you are paying $3000 to the supplier it means your liability goes down so that is debit and you are paying cash so it is credit and the second part is like supplier is issuing you a 100 dollar credit note so credit note means once again account payable, payable will go down so 100 dollar is a, a account payable goes down means liability goes down that is debit and since the value of your inventory on account of discount is less so value of inventory will go down so it will be a credit entry for the asset okay ji so this is this transaction is listed here so a, any anything any particular item like where you have doubt or anything in this like how do we make entry no doubt actually but only i had combined it when i gave that yeah it's okay it's okay sir Yeah okay actually I, when we do a real business like when we try to prepare everything as it is done in the real life in the manual bookkeeping then we will take care that you know that we have every voucher number credit note and everything so we will do a very a small uh, business accounting in the manual mode then we will really understand that how exactly it is done so here it is just to get you started Th- yeah, these are mm-hmm. yeah, okay. mm-hmm. so actually yeah that was that is also like one part like suppose you have supplier account you have a book for every supplier or for every customer so how do you maintain every like say that supplier has been for for certain years and there is some concept of permanent account and and temporary account we will talk about that and then we will see like what happens after a particular period okay ji so we will talk about that sir okay so 
let's uh, start with where, what we did in the last class so let me just give you a two minute recap of what we covered in what we discussed in the last class so we uh, started with bookkeeping process and we said that first of all you should have a so you have you should have source documents then from source document you prepare the general journal or this is journal or it can be day book so we today we will talk about day book like how it is actually done and then from day book you have accounts in accounts in uh, ledger so today we will also talk about posting process and then you have trial balance and then financial report so we are still here like we in the assignment we did the journalizing process but we did not talk too much about day book so we we'll, today we will talk about day book and then posting so these two elements we will talk today <coughs> then debit and credit sandeep uh, created a uh, created a mnemonic for this that asset increase is is debit so this is very helpful just remember this and we will be able to do everything and then another rule was that debit is always equal to credit it's like saying that whenever you are you have left lhs and you have rhs so actually balance sheet equation it, this is the fundamental you are converting plus and minus into debit and credit okay ji so you are not using plus sign or minus sign but you are using debit or credit and everything without plus and minus sign these are the rules so if you follow these rules this is equivalent to saying that left hand side must match with right hand side so that mathematical thing has been converted into accounting language as, as these two rules aid and debit must be equal to credit then we talked about journalizing process data from source documents to journals and then we said that we have a chart of accounts so it is proper listing of uh, all the account titles and account numbers okay and what is the what are the number of accounts in chart of account depends on the complexity of the business in which sector you are operating so there are different sectors which are more complex than some other sectors so chart of accounts will be more complicated it will the so in general like you will have like 3000 4000 account titles for even a retailer okay ji so this is like we just talked that word. so we don't need to, to focus too much on chart of account but it should be very clearly laid out depending on the need of the organization at what level they want to analyze data and what are the accounts it should be very clearly noted that what are the accounts which will be part of double entry accounting system so when we say double entry accounting system the debit must be equal to credit so it should not happen that you are trying to equate debit is equal to credit and a particular account is not part of the double entry accounting system so those things are clearly listed in chart of accounts any examples of the uh, heads which will not be part of a double entry yeah okay Let, let's think about like say uh for example if you have say accounts payable okay ji so accounts payable generally what in real life what will you have in real life accounts payable you will have like whatever supplier suppose you have 100 suppliers so all the 100 supplier books will be different isn't it you will have a general ledger account for all the suppliers but there will be a con- there will be a control um, control account which will sum all yeah. which will sum all the data from all the suppliers right. okay ji so suppose you are entering into the supplier account also and you are also entering into the control account so when you are making post doing the posting suppose yeah. you are so you will be doing posting into the supplier book to consolidate that yeah and you consolidate and put into the accounts payable so if if a person is not knowledgeable that where i should like where all the debit should be equal to credit okay ji 
so this should be known to the person that okay whether you have to look into every supplier so what is the relationship between all the supplier accounts and account payable because simply this is all the sum which post is transferred here isn't it so that's the idea of like in a way what we are saying that all the supplier accounts are subsidiary accounts which gives the detail about accounts payable account no it will be part of chart of accounts but it will be clearly laid out that what is the relationship between this account and this account and when and when you are verifying the accounting equation either you use data from here or from here okay ji so this is a very simple example where you are like it, we are very we are easy to, we are easily visualizing it but if you have like many layers of right, right, depending on the industry even to the customers yes yes exactly that is account receivable also can be uh, having a subset or in uh, yeah exactly number of like an it company will have a large number of customers the, so all these customers go money to this uh, organization <coughs> yeah so, so they, they will probably have a chart of account which will have uh, Rather than the suppliers to the customers. Yeah, so they will, you know, like account receivable, and there is something called uh, uh, you have bad debt allowance. So you yeah. know, you you know that, but bad debt allowance cannot be at the at the customer level. Oh, okay, no, no, it will be overall. So all those things must be very clearly stated in chart of account, so that you know, like when you are adding. or you are trying to verify that whether my account is correct or not at what level what are the accounts you will pull the data from okay ji actually yeah we will talk about like we, when we talk about uh, sales accounting then we will talk about ba bad debt expense we will talk about bad debt allowance and at what level they are so it will it will become more clear so these are the terms which we learnt in the last class transaction document voucher book of original entry day book general journal a specialized journal debit credit journalizing chart of accounts okay in any, any doubt in uh, these terms sandeep okay ji good so okay we are not covering this and we are not covering this today so we will focus on posting process subsidiary ledgers and book keeping process in computerized system so this is our original bookkeeping uh, diagram bookkeeping process diagram in the manual accounting system this is how it it is done okay ji so this is just to show you so let's talk about uh, posting into general ledger so before we start like posting let's understand what is general ledger so if you look at traditionally like if you look here is the diagram okay ji so this is this used to be a bound book and it has like you can add number of you know you can add page you can remove page from this book and it will contain a number of accounts okay it will contain a number of accounts for example suppose sandeep is a customer of a particular business so it it will con it may contain okay sandeep's account and suppose somebody is shankar ji's supplier so it will com contain shankar ji account so every so there will be an, a large number of accounts which will be present in this this ledger this book and then the the question is what is ledger account it is listing of all the increases so ledger account so ledger account is also known as t account so we will see why it is known as t account and t account so when we say sandeep and here you have david and you, on the right hand side you have credit so it will contain all the increases and all the decreases of a particular account so ledger account is listing of so if you look, if you go and see a particular account you will see that it is listing all the increases and all the decreases that has happened into a particular account 
so let's look at like how it looks like and why it is known as t account so ledger accounts are also called t accounts so here like suppose you have a you have account cash account so you have cash on the left hand side you have debit and then on the right hand side you have credit and you keep entering okay so you keep entering data here so and this is the division between the debit side and credit side so it looks like a t okay so that's why it is known as t account okay so vertical line in the t divides the account into left and right side for recording increasing or decreasing depend in the account so account title is on, is on the horizontal line of t so here you are given the account title and the account number and the folio number so we will also talk about what is the meaning of folio okay so here you have account title and you have debit side and you have credit side so this is always the case and uh, that's why it is known as t account okay ji so how do we make entry like like once you have the data in the general journal okay let's talk about a very small business only at this point of time for simplicity in understanding we are assuming that all the data are entered into general journal and when we uh, and now we need to post that transfer those transactions into accounts available in ledger book okay so how do we do that so it is 100% mechanical process they like people even like uh, studying in say third standard should be able to do that like once you tell the process so analyzing of analysis of transaction whether it will be debit or it will be credit what are the accounts that will be touched that is at the journalizing layer okay ji and once we have journalized we are just looking at the journal and we are just entering debit side and credit side so transferring entry into t account from general ledger or special journal is a 100% mechanical process okay ji every entry in journal is already classified either as debit or credit entry data is simply copied to t account okay so let's see i think uh, so before we talk about balance let's see one example that how it is done okay this is example of posting pro is it visible to you yes sir okay so let's look at the this is the general journal and this is general ledger okay ji and here i am showing one, only one account say cash account okay ji so this is a t account this is this account is in general ledger so how do we transfer this this is like debit side once again like this is the this is the t line okay ji this is the header and this is the dividing line so here you see suppose i am tra transferring this uh, data from 3rd january into t account so this date just date is copied here whatever is the entry number so this is the j or the voucher number that is transferred at this location explanation is copied here okay ji and then amount this is uh, cash is credited so here cash will be credited here okay and account number 100 this matches with this one so what you see is this is very uh, mechanical process so we are transferring the data from general journal to to the general ledger so is the, is this posting process clear sandeep shankar okay so this is uh, Okay, so here, actually, if you look at any, like if you are start, if you are uh, posting it, so every entry will have either two or more than two and uh, two debits and credits in general, in general general. Right. 
so the, it will be the same number of entry into general journal but in different accounts so That's here yeah so yeah exactly sir so here if you look at general journal you will say that this is a chronological listing of all the events so this is actually time wise data and if you look at the general ledger you will say that this is a you know uh, characteristic wise data so if you are cash so all the cash transactions are if it is credit so here this may not be this is not the listing of events by day this is listing of events by day and what is the nature of that account category. yeah category okay so this is category time plus category so obviously if you have two second january transaction so all the debit entries on so will be on left hand side so it will be once again according to date wise but he here it will contain only data about the cash similarly you will have a store uh, inventory or purchase account or you will have like different types of account paid in capital account okay ji yeah sandeep clear yes. okay ji yeah. good it will be yeah obviously like when you are entering entry should be in that order even in the general ledger you cannot say that okay let me post 5th january first and then the 4th january because if you if you think about a large business and if you want to verify something it should be in that order okay ji so that where okay let me go to slide number 9 slide number 9 this is slide number 9 Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and they tell me wh wh what is the doubt? Yeah, just because this we have vertical line to write the account into left and right side of recording, increasing and decreasing in the account, not necessarily in the order. Okay, here it it okay. The meaning is that suppose uh, you have a uh, owner's equity account. so will it so here increase will be on this this side that is what i meant to say if it is suppose owners okay let me draw suppose you have uh, sandeep's capital account there will be a ledger account for sandeep's capital isn't it so if you are contributing if your value is in, like suppose you contributed 100000 dollars in the business so increase will be noted on the right hand side this time and suppose you, you you paid in additional capital of 20000 so one second increase will be on so that is the meaning that here increase and decrease this is for asset but increase and decrease will be for liability and increase decrease isn't it so here i am saying t account divides the account into left and right side of for recording increasing and decreases in the account so increase or decrease depends on the nature of the account Le so you cannot associate left with increasing and right with decreasing okay ji this is not association okay sorry okay ji yeah uh, so it will always be with respect to the company right yeah it, it is okay when we are doing accounting it will be always with respect to the company yep yeah. okay ji so it is always with respect to the business entity for which we are doing accounting so there also when there is uh, okay so that you go from the from the from the general account general journal whatever uh, the nature is it will go right down there yes so you don't have to put your mind you don't have to use your brain for you know posting it so okay. when you are prepare yeah when you are preparing the general journal at that point of time every transaction is analyzed and all the accounts which will be touched is identified and correct debit and credit is recognized at that point of time okay ji 
and posting is, is it's a very mechanical process you directly put the data from general journal into relevant accounts and this is called cross referencing we were in the example so if you see one two three four links are there so this is called cross referencing so what is the meaning of cross referencing you are so at any point of time if I want to verify that a particular transaction in general ledger is correct or incorrect is there a mistake in that you should be very easily able to pinpoint the transaction in general journal so this cross referencing so this is T accounts on it this is this and this is the dividing line okay okay see. so here I haven't shown T but this is what T means and cross referencing okay see. and cross referencing is that what are the mechanism to link a particular entry in T account with that in the general account so there are different mechanism of linking so here like I have shown you the four these are the links post account number so the account number should match here date should match and the voucher number and general reference number should match so this is called cross referencing ok ji so let's go back to where we were discussing ok so at the end of the day if you look at any account say let's look at uh, a supplier account and you add all the debit entries and you add all the credit entries so if you're looking at supplier account and suppose you owe money to the supplier so will it have will debit entry will be more or will credit entry will be more supplier account is liability account so liability account so credit will be more okay so there is a term called you know debit balance account and there is a term called credit balance account the meaning is simple if if you have a account and if debit entry increases the value of that account then it is called debit balance account and if you have an account where increase is identified by putting data on credit side then we say that this account is credit balance account and in, gen in general the debit balance account if you do debit minus credit it will be, it will be a positive number in general but this is not a rule similarly if you have a credit balance account and if you do credit minus debit of all the entries it will come out to be positive number okay so those accounts are known as credit balance account okay so this this is also like suppose you are writing a program so you need to know whether it is a credit balance or debit balance and then if you are fitting into the accounting equation okay so sometimes you do credit minus debit sometimes you do debit minus credit to know the balance of the account so is this concept clear okay so liability and owner's equity they are credit balance accounts what about expense is it a credit balance or is it a debit balance account no the rule is okay okay listen to the rule whatever entry is increasing the value is the name of the account so so if you have expense account how do we increase the expense do we debit the expense or do we credit the expense debit okay let's look expense account let's make one suppose this is a rent expense and you paid the rent so rent will be so any expense will decrease the owner's equity yeah. and decreasing the owner's equity means it is debit entry yeah. so rent expense increases when you debit it so this is a debit balance account all the expense will be debit balance account 
so and simple just remember all the owners equity accounts are credit balance account and expenses opposite to owners equity it is reducing the owners equity so it will be a debit account debit balance account and is this concept clear this is very simple concept yeah shankar sir yeah yeah okay. so this is like so there are actually if you look at uh, you know like uh, general ledger like there are different formats into play so one format we saw is this one that here one format is that you have many lines date explanation reference number debit date explanation reference number credit so this is one format another very popular format is this one slide number 12 that you don't you do not have duplicate date and duplicate explanation and duplicate general ref so only thing is that here this is the t account you look at this this is the t part okay ji this part and all other things are whether you have debit entry or credit entry you will have date information you will have explanation information you will have general re reference number so why to duplicate the space okay ji so this is another format so company choose different format depending on like whatever is the legacy of that company and along with that you will generally you, you have a running balance so suppose this is a cash and cash is a debit balance account so you will always do debit minus credit and you will put the balance and similarly so sandeep can balance be negative in cash and how it can be negative okay so that's the only case and if suppose you have, you don't have overdrawn facility in the bank then since cash is a physical asset and you cannot pay more than what you have it will not be so if you do not have overdrawn facility with a bank account then it cannot be negative but uh, suppose you have uh, suppose uh, so Okay, think about this. Account payable. Let's account payable is a supplier name say Ram Enterprises. Suppose this is a supplier account, and all the whatever amount you pay, you note down this side, and balance will be balance will be credit minus debit. Yeah. Okay, so think about scenario when it will be negative or not. We have already dis discussed this scenario. suppose you right now suppose you have paid each and every penny to ram enterprises and you return some return some good and he the ram enterprise issues you a credit note so credit note will be entered on this side okay so in that case you will have credit minus debit as negative balance so you know like for any account if you look at any t account you will be able to know like what are the different transaction which can touch a particular t account so so accountants very easily like you know like once they are start doing all the entries they know that what are the different types of transaction which can increase come here which can come on left hand side which can come on right hand side okay ji so this is the format we were talking about that we have date we have the explanation debit credit and running balance okay ji and running balance also they don't say that you know it's a positive balance or negative balance they say it is debit balance or credit balance okay, okay ji so credit balance itself means you know this is a like overdrawn account if it is cash account so we already talked about cross referencing so cross referencing is the process of using numbering dating and some other form of identification to relate each general ledger posting to the appropriate general entry single transaction from the journal might be posted to several ledger accounts minimum it will be posted to two accounts but it can be more than four more than 10 any anything depends on the how complex the transaction is okay ji Yeah, and this is the pop. This is the popular format we talked about. So we already covered this. We already covered this one. Okay, so this is uh, this slide tells you like what is different in the. So 
if you look at any uh, the accounting process it has been for centuries and it has evolved over time as per the need of the business okay so division of labor as prem sir was talking about division of labor how do we make it verifiable how do we make it accurate so all the those manual processes were built taking into account that there there was no calculator there was no you know the computer say 200 years ago so all those processes but even now if you look at computerized system this is very much simplified and but a, a part of the legacy of you know development of accounting is left behind but let's look at like how it is simplified so generally you have a transaction entry screen so when we say transaction entry suppose you purchase something and goods comes into warehouse you verify the goods and you prepare the document so as soon as you know the transaction document is prepared it will go into transaction database it will also go into general day book and it will also go into general ledger so in one go like whenever a particular transaction is verified and confirmed that this is right so it is now we are not you know not uh, uh, doing the manual that okay post into general or post into ledger everything is automated and it directly it may be simultaneous process so once this is so only requirement that this is verified transaction so once the data is verified when we say verified means like suppose a particular transaction requires authorization by three different uh, persons and if all the three persons have verified it so it will go into it will flow into all at all places so the, so whatever is the nature of the bad job whenever is the bad job either at the end of the day or at the end of the week so whenever is the bad job it will post data into all places if it is verified okay ji so this is a big difference that manual system was a linear process that one data must flow and sanctity at each level is must be maintained and here the data flows into all three places simultaneously and after that even the trial balance what was the purpose of trial balance that trial balance was like let's pull all the summary of summary of all the accounts in general ledger and see that debit mat matches with the credit okay ji but now in computerized system on daily basis you can check that that okay if the transaction is posted there should not be a partial posting if you are posting any transaction there should be full posting and at any point of time all the debit must be equal to credit okay ji so that if there is a check in the computer system which verifies the data with each transaction there is no need for trial balance and then you financial statements are drawn from it a any doubt in this one only one question from me uttam yeah go ahead sir Yeah okay. So why do you require still a day book or a journal now? Why can't it go directly into a ledger? What value does a journal add now? Journal uh, sir there are many uh, you know like f there are many uh, uh, accounts for which you don't have a source document and suppose you create a number of vouchers. So all those vouchers must go at the at the journal level. Yeah okay. And it goes through a really standard authorization process before it gets posted. Hmm hmm hmm. Once that is done, hmm hmm. Because uh, a journal will be an intermediate document. Ultimately, the accounting process will work on the basis of the ledgers. Yeah yes. So actually, if if you look at this, like if you look at purely efficiency point of view, maybe like there is no value in it. But since like you know like there are many things in uh, you know accounting. which is a part of legacy okay ji so so there are many uh, steps like i have i have looked at you know, the accounting system which we were working so even the sum total and digit and all 
and even if you look there there should not be a hole in the you know the hole in the serial number so those things are not a mandatory requirement considering today's uh, computerized system but in in number of things if you look at any accounting package which may not be necessary but they have been carried because of the legacy so whenever this translation happened from manual to computerized all the packages were written considering that you know uh, uh, how accountants were easy to for accountants it was easy to understand so right now i don't know exactly why this is journal book like the question you are asking i do not know exactly why they are left okay ji and what is the relevance but my guess is that it is just a part of legacy of the manual accounting right but i am not sure sir all right okay okay ji okay so till now like whatever we were discussing we were saying that you know uh, we have a very small business we will generalize every entry into general journal only but in real life that is not the case okay in the real life every day you will have huge number of transactions okay and one person cannot generalize everything and it will become too cumbersome for you know for having only one general journal book and making all the entries <clears throat> and if you really look at the assignment we did once we have done the journalizing and we once we need to post into post into our general ledger like you will see that okay why there is so much duplication for every transaction if there is a sales transaction everybody knows like whenever there is a cash sales cash will go up and merchandise will go down so there are many events which are recurring events and which which very clearly understood that if this thing happens what are the accounts so why do we need to place a debit entry and credit entry at the journal level okay ji so can we avoid that so for that purpose you have a special books a special journals and they are they are called day books so day books generally you have like whenever there is sales on credit you will have <coughs> a day book similarly if you have <coughs> return on return of transaction so there are <coughs> a number of uh, transaction excuse me <coughs> so actually there are num- the transactions which are repeated on every day basis and everybody knows that every accountant understand if, if this is the transaction what are the debit accounts and what are the credit accounts so so can we miss a part of the tra- can we miss writing a, you know the every time analyze this transaction and every time why do we need to write a credit entry and debit entry so this was to minimize the work so let look at look at one of the example then we will have a better idea that what do we mean by you know <coughs> reducing the work and a specialized transaction let's go to slide number 19 is my screen visible yeah okay ji so <coughs> if you look look here we have in three transactions given and three these three transactions are general english language diary the two water purifiers rs2100 each of five buckets were sold for this and dated this and voucher number this whatever is there invoice number is noted here similarly the second transaction and third transaction if we if we use our general convention a putting of uh, putting the data in the general journal what will we do for each transaction you will write debit and credit for this also debit and credit for this also you will write debit and credit for this these sales okay ji but now rather than doing journalizing you have a sales book you have a this is the sales book okay and in the sales book and what will be the nature of this sales book and this this sales book contains only the credit sales this contains only the so when i say sales book this is credit sales okay then okay. so at journalizing level we are not entering you know debit and credit we are just entering one amount and everybody knows that if this amount is there written here it means this is a liability account and liability account liability is going up so this is this must be a 
credit account isn't it so if it is a uh, sales on credit why do we need to analyze each and every time and why do we need to write two lines for it that okay raman trader credit this much and so this is a very simple uh, sales transaction and it is not everything is not captured here only a part of the, only the amount and the name of the trader and what is the invoice number what is the date only that part is captured here so if you look this is very simplified as compared to general journal okay ji and when we transfer post data now let's understand like posting when we said like posting is putting this amount into relevant t accounts general ledger accounts so at that point of time you know that okay if i am using sales book to posting data i will put the data into the sales okay ji so here 4850 4850 Five zero. This is Raman Traders account. Okay, ji. And whatever is the other part of the entry, where wherever it should have been entered, those entries are also made. So, if for a particular book, if you are start posting it, so you will be posting into the here you will you will have credit entry, and then you will also have debit entry for these things. So, if you look, what is the debit entry for this debit entry is. sales revenue isn't it so whenever you are selling something your uh, liability goes up and sales revenue goes up so liability going up, so liability going up and then the sales so you will have uh, every time if you do it you will uh, okay just this is sales journal okay this is not purchase okay okay sorry sorry about this confusion sales journal is like this is account receivable isn't it okay correct that's what i was wondering why yeah no no i think yeah i i was considering that as a purchase so th these are actually uh, customers okay sorry these are customers so if if these are customers whenever you are doing sales on credit so it means yeah this is account receivable account receivable so these are account receivable so these are customers not the suppliers the name sounded to me like supplier and you know <laughs> so these will be debit entries so you are making a debit entry here debit debit this account debit this account and balance into the revenue and balance into the revenue so if you pick one book and you know that okay this is a you know a sales book and sales book so these amounts must be account receivable amount this is debit account so you put the debit entry and corresponding to that so it depends like when do you post into the sales revenue it can be at daily level it can be at weekly level it can be at monthly level so depending on what is your period depending on the volume you will post whenever you are posting it you you directly post this data into here rather than posting so here there will be a reference number once again this entry should have a reference into the sales day book okay ji so if i want to verify from where do i get 110850 for what period where is the you know the re relevant uh, uh, entry into the day book so you should be able to cross reference it is this point clear to you actually this is very important to understand like why you know different day books evolved and uh, why it is easy to work in this way so let me repeat the idea once again like there are certain transactions which are very well known in a business okay ji and the nature of transactions are always the same and it is very high volume even if the nature of transaction is same and suppose you have only one transaction in a day then you do not need to you know work out any shortcut or workout in a different book you can just go through the general journal but if the volume is large and the nature of transaction is very fixed that okay this is debit this is credit every time whenever this happens no need to analyze the transaction then you have a, a specialized journal for it and that is called day book okay ji and day book most of the time it will contain only one side of the entry because the other side is understood okay ji and when we are posting the data from the day book into the general ledger at that point of time whenever like whatever is the periodicity of posting we make a entry into the other side of the account 
is the process clear of the special journal? Yeah. Shankar sir, is it clear? Yeah. Okay, sir. Good. So let's see that we have covered everything. Just one second. <coughs> so we discussed about okay ji so uh, i will uh, walk through these uh, documents uh, quite fast now and if you have like any doubt just uh, just uh, stop me okay ji for a small business like uh, we as we said that we we can have all the entries in general general but as the bu business becomes large you need to enter you, you cannot enter all the entries into a single journal and anyway like suppose you have one uh, 2000 or 3000 entries one person like how do we divide the labor so it is the, all these processes have evolved over time as per the need of the business how to make it simplified so whatever prem sir was talking to you in the beginning whatever points he was talking he was talking from that perspective that it it evolved over time the processes got changed and it evolved for better efficiency better auditing better accuracy division of labor all those things okay ji so for quick efficient and accurate recording of business transaction journal is subdivided into a special journals and what is the basis for a special journal first basis you should have the similar nature of the transaction and it should be repetitive in nature repetitive means like there are like huge volume of that is happening again and again so the even if you do a small improvement in a transaction that is repetitive in nature the saving labor saving efficiency saving will be high so that's the logic for it okay ji for example if you look like what are the different transactions which happen on regular basis and which is always the nature is always the same cash transactions credit sales credit purchases so these are the different books which we have uh, in different business so one business can decide what should go into a special journal and what should go into the general journal so depending on what is the volume of particular transaction a particular business owner can decide how to you know capture the so the idea is same like you you always have journalizing uh, vouching and journalizing and posting but the mechanism may be different from one company to another company depending on the business requirement okay ji what <coughs> so these books are called subsidiary books or day books and what is the advantage division of labor economical ease of managerial reporting so these are few of the advantages <laughs> so this is this slide is very similar to what we covered so what is the purpose of cash book cash receipts and cash payment okay so here <coughs> this is another like actually assignment for this week is going through chapter 3 and chapter 4 of which i have sent to you so once you have understood the fundamental you can easily go through you know uh, easily read through those chapters okay and then you will read uh, you will see that actually cash transaction ha handles both the part cash re receipt and cash payment and there you have a debit side also and credit side also but but note that for every debit entry into the cash book the other side of the transaction is not listed in the cash book okay ji similarly whenever you are paying cash suppose you you are running a business and you paid the rent so if you paid rent through cash you will you will capture in the credit side that okay i paid this much cash cash going out but other side that is rent expense you are not not capturing in the cash book okay so this is a a special type of day book where you have debit side and credit side but debit side is of different transaction credit side is, is of different transaction similarly you have purchase book purchase return book you can have sales book sales return book and journal and whatever transactions which so see this will we in general this will capture 90% of the transaction of a business and whatever is not captured in these transactions it means they need to be analyzed they need to be think through that okay what is what is special in that what is credit what is debit so that goes through general journal or we, that is also called journal proper or it is also called journal residual why residual because they are not captured by the general whatever general uh, whatever a specialized books you have they are not uh, getting captured by these normal transactions of the business 
so that's why they are called journal residual okay ji so central theme we already talked the since the nature of transaction in a special journal is known either debit or credit side of journalizing is done in the special book the other side of the entry is implicit okay ji it's not noted down when data is posted from journal to the ledger both debit and credit sides of the transactions are posted and we already saw the example okay this and okay this is the last two slide yeah okay here we talked about like something like subsidiary ledger sometimes sometimes like we so subsidiary ledger like suppose we were talking already like we have already discussed it suppose you have account payable so account payable is a control account account payable is a control account and there will be many subsidiary accounts so what are whatever suppliers you have they are the they are called subsidiary accounts and value of all the entries in subsidiary ledger must match with the control account okay ji and say if i am if i if we, you are told to verify whether debit is equal to credit so either you you will look at the control amount or you will look at the summation of all the entries in the subsidiary ledger but you are not going to look at both the okay blindly you cannot go at okay let's pick all the accounts and you know try to see if debit is equal to credit it will not match isn't it so you have to decide that when you are writing any accounting equation for say software then what data to you know verify debit that rule that asset is equal to liability plus owner's equity so we have to decide so generally it is done at the control level account so even though like when you are entering the data into the ledger you enter the data into the subsidiary ledger like say all the suppliers and you also enter into a control account that is accounts payable account and what prem sir told me that you know sometimes what happens that subsidiary ledger itself it says you have a subsidiary ledger and at the beginning of that you will have control account so say you have all accounts payable account like you have 100 suppliers so all the 100 suppliers are in a separate book say accounts payable book and the starting page will be control account book so there is not a special you know in general ledger may not, it may not be a control account control account itself will be along with the subsidiary ledger okay ji so that is what is uh, how it is done so th that's all from for today one question before you go yeah okay ji Yeah, okay, ji. Will a salary account be maintained as a control account? You know, so like if if we are looking, And okay. Subsidiary account for each uh, employee. Yeah, yes, sir. Like for every person, if you look at like uh, there must be account, isn't it? For every yeah. person, like uh, whatever is, are the people employed, there will be a account. And then there will be a control account. Right. That what? And Yeah, yes, so yes. Has to be paid and given to somebody else. So for all this, there will be a source document which will be the payslip of I mean uh, pay account which is being maintained for each guy. Yes. But uh, so so that's how it will work, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Actually, once you go through this, uh, you know, the petty cash book, how it is accounting is done, you will have a, um, a better idea. Okay, sir. So actually, if you go through chapter four, there is a something called petty cash book, and then you will see that you know, like even petty cash book, that will give you idea that how a different employer can have, like how their accounts can be. So suppose there are ten types of ten uh, types of uh, transaction that can that can be related to a particular to any employee. So in the book, so if you are if you have a day book for for say employees you have a special day book you don't the data is not flowing through the general journal so it it will have you know huge number of uh, columns and each column will be different the salary income tax other benefit loan so whatever are the nature of transaction you can have different columns okay ji and then when posting is done it is uh, the other side of the, uh, 
side of the transaction is taken care i think a petty cash book will be a good idea to go through sir okay. so assignment for next uh, sandeep any doubt before we talk about assignment no 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 i think it's fine for now like if uh, okay the uh, why like we are emphasizing this one like once you are able to this is the you know the uh, like whatever we are talking these are the fundamentals if you are very thorough with these fundamentals i think just recap you know like whatever lecture notes you have slides you have go through if you are able to master this thing other lectures will be very easy that debit credit and how do we treat a, when we buy equipment what is depreciation and everything so if the fundamental is very very clear okay, how the data is moving how the data is captured other part will be like very easy to go through so so just focus on the fundamentals and okay so for next class actually i had a different assignment ready but what premsas told me that you know like don't give those assignment uh chapter 3 and chapter 4 i have sent you the pdf file right okay yeah. so he said that uh, like just read those chapters so okay. the assignment is reading those chapters and right. preparing slides slides means like not 20 slides like make five slides for each chapter like what is the important thing you learnt okay ji make slides and then make slides for whatever doubts you have so just make a summary of your learning so that that depends on you like how detailed or how uh, you know uh, brief you want to make and but whatever doubts you have make these doubts very clearly stated that okay this point i am not able to understand why the why this is done how this is done okay ji so doubts and learning for chapter 3 and 4 both so actually it okay just to like since i i also went through this uh, last 3 4 days i was going through that so it may sound intimidating that this is like 50 page 100 page but if you really look at the book like there are lot of examples and examples cover 75% of the pages okay ji so it is 100 page but actually it is only 20 page just to okay. just to give you you know like uh, some comfort that it is 100 page okay okay so oh and sandeep i will uh, i will go through your assignment and then i will send it back to you uh, i think most of it is the main part is not that Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I will. Say, I will send you the solution. Actually, I was waiting for all the submission before sending the answer. I was. Okay. Well Not a problem, sir. I, I will send you the solution. I will send the solution just okay. like. I have already sent it to you. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So I will. I will also like look at the answer, and if there is any feedback, I will uh, mark that in red color. and send to you guys okay and uh, i will also send yeah. you the solutions okay ji yeah. anything else okay. any doubt anything you, you need to uh, clear, clarify okay ji that's all from all my right. side all right okay ji bye bye take okay. care good night and have a nice sunday yeah okay ji bye bye good night okay.